Hello and welcome to another video of this Solidity to it yourself tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the fallback and receive function. In the last video, we looked at a very simple example on the fallback function and during that comp 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 compilation time, it gave us an error saying that the receive function does not exist. So there is no receive ether function, there is a fallback. That means there is a function known as receive, which we are going to look at today. So what we're going to do is let's remove this and add the last public run. And I'm doing this on the same contract as we were working, which is the fifth payable contract. And then I'm going to say receive external payable. So receive is a function which is which can only exist once and it is used to get deposit ether from any other place. So it receives ether. It can be only one in the contract. And if I look at the Solidity 0.62 documentation uh, or whatever documentation on Solidity, it says that a contract can have only one receive function using receive external table without the function keyword. And it needs to be external. Fallback function can also be one. And then it has it cannot have arguments or nothing returned. So we will look at it. Don't worry about the details, but I wanted to show you this documentation. So now this is the receive function. One of the things which you wanted to notice is that for functions like constructor is a function, but you do not have the function keyword. We created a user defined function as deposit cryptos, and therefore I mentioned the function keyword. In withdraw crypto, it is also a user defined function. We had to mention the function keyword in front of it, but modifier or even the receive, the Solidity compiler knows that the receive is a function, which is systems function. It's that for, that's why you do not need to have the function keyword in front of it. And so is the case with fallback. So I'm gonna set the last run. The reason I'm setting the last run as receive function is for us to understand when this function is executed. Now, I say fallback external table. So when the fallback function runs, which has also an external and a payable keyword here on their declaration, the last run is set to fallback just for our understanding. Now with this, I'm gonna compile. You see that the warning has disappeared. Obviously we got the receive function. We go back in here and deploy the contract. Once the contract is deployed, I'm gonna do a very simple regular transaction of depositing 100 fine to the contract, which is 0.1 ether. And then I'm gonna go and copy the data. Please look at my previous video. We talked about this input data, copy, and I'm gonna paste this in the call data. Now, if you look at it, now before I copy here, let, let, let's see, the last run is null, obviously because we have not set it up to anything yet, it's default. Next is, there is nothing here and I click on transact, but you see that it succeeded because it was able to transfer zero way, but it just succeeded because it was a zero way. Let's see what was the last run. You see, as soon as I hit the transact, there is no transaction happened. There is no change in the value of ether, but the receive function was called again. There is nothing, right? There is nothing. And it does not know it has to hit the deposit crypto. Therefore, there is no change in the balance or withdraw. But it went to the function and the function was successfully executed because it went to the receive. The first function that it goes here is the receive, if receive exists. Now, in the from the previous one, I copied the input data where we were transferring these many ways, I'm gonna copy here, and then I'm gonna make it, let's say, um, zero fine. There is nothing I'm transferring, but I am wanting to transfer, this is the data. Now what will happen is, it is going to error out, let's see. So it's gonna error because it says error check condition. It knows that this data hash is coming from here, ending with AFO, 
and you would see that here I'm transferring these many ways. That means I want to transfer a value. Obviously, it needs to be more than 100 GUI as the minimum ETH. But I am transferring here zero finite. And therefore, this one failed. This one did not execute. Now, if you look at it, the last run still is the receive function. It is a, from the last time when we ran it. It did not change its value. Now, with this data, I'm going to change the value to 100 fine. Now, this is a fair transaction, right? If I say transact, it is a regular transaction. There is no change. And you would see that the last run still is not changed. It's the receive function because it was set two transactions ago. Now, when I mess it up, I just say some random alphanumeric and I say transact. The call data should be with, okay. So I'm gonna make it some random number and say I transact. You would see that it went through, but there is nothing transferred, obviously. We ended up paying gas fees too. Let's see the last run. It says fallback because this particular random hex did not have hit any function. It wasn't even blank, which would go to the receive function, but it was erroneous and it went to the fallback. So fallback is catch all kind of a function wherein if nothing hits, it goes to the fallback. If there is, a, there is nothing here and I say 100 here, it still, go, still goes to the receive function, but without the blank, with the blank, with 100 fine, if you see the balance has changed, so 0 0.4. The receive function is able to receive the value of the contract even without the deposit crypto. So the deposit crypto method is essentially just doing the same, but it does not put any value in the message or sender because we have not listed that in the receive. So what we are gonna do is for the last run, instead of just receiving like this, I'm gonna receive, I'm gonna say deposit crypto. So when you hit the last run, I'm gonna hit the deposit crypto. Make sense? So I can do that in order to ensure that other than receiving, there are few other statements in the deposit crypto that we wanted to execute. That also executes. So let's quickly deploy that. Compile, deploy, and as soon as now, we say 100 fine, and instead of deposit, I'm just gonna say blank transact. It changes the balance because it goes to the receive and it runs the deposit cryptos. And now if I say, from address zero, you would see that the address exists. And if I paste the same address over here, you would see that these many ways were transferred. So this is the functionality of fallback. And any, any erroneous data, if I say transact, it is going to be the fallback function. I hope this was clear. Um, thank you for watching.